live from Anaheim, California, it's theCUBE, covering Nutanix.next 2019. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next here in Anaheim. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, John Furrier. We are joined by Victoria Hurtado. She is the Director IT Operations at Kern Healthcare Systems. Welcome, Victoria. Hi, thank you for having me. So for our viewers that are not familiar with, with Kern, t t tell us a little bit about what you do and what you're all about. Sure, so we are a health payer provider. So um, we are a managed care Medi-Cal plan. Uh, we have a contract with the state of California to provide Medi-Cal services to uh, about 255,000 members in Kern County located in Bakersfield, California. Uh, so if you really think of, you know, want to know more about this, like a Kaiser without the provider network. And so we pay uh, the services, the bills that come in, um, as well as authorize the services that need to be rendered for members. Yep. So talk about your decision to move from traditional storage to HCI. So really where our decision stemmed from was our roadmap. And um, over the last several years, we have had a three-tier traditional storage. Um, and the daily task of our system administrators have increased over time with integration. And as technology increases, there's more integration. And so we really wanted to focus on how do we decrease that as well as increase efficiencies so that we can provide the services that we need to for our internal customers as well as our external customers customers, our members and providers. And, had, and um, the efficiencies, what was the project plan? How did you go, how did you approach it? Sure, so our strategy was really a three-phase approach. So we wanted to implement VDI for our internal uh, employees. So we started off with VDI. Uh, once we have transitioned to that, we will be migrating or in the process of right now, our core claim system, which is that our our bread and butter, really. Um, and so we'll do a six plan, a month plan on that, uh, see how that goes, and then once that is successful, which I feel will be successful, we will migrate our entire infrastructure over. And you happy with the Nutanix so far? Yes, yeah, so um, the first deployment was uh, Nutanix with Citrix and VMware, um, that entire combination. I've had a few consultants come in and they're like, oh, you've got the Ferrari of VDI. And I'm like, yes, we absolutely do, <laughs> so yes. When you're thinking about efficiencies, I mean, one of the things before the cameras were rolling, you were talking a little bit about what it means for employees. Can you talk a little bit about how they then structure their day, they structure how, which projects they work on and, 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 and how they are more productive given these different changes? Sure, so um, an organization like us, we are always challenged with guidelines changing from the state. Um, they have a tendency to want to change things very frequently, so uh, we often have a lot of uh, uh, critical projects that we're doing on an everyday basis and um, that work really gets them consumed. And so um, what we're able to do with Nutanix is alleviate those responsibilities so that we can focus on the more critical, you know, impacting scenarios versus, you know, managing a LUN and moving a volume and making sure the system up, is up and running. Uh, we're really focused on providing care to our members because our members are what count. Um, and, you know, it also allows for, you know, a member to get the services that they need while they're sitting in the doctor's office waiting for a response from our organization. How's the IT ops world these days? Because there's so much tech out there. Yes. <laughs> when you look at the landscape, because you got, you got a unique situation, you got care and you got payments, yes. people are relying on this, so you don't have a lot of room for mistakes. Correct. What do you guys see in that operations? Suppliers out there, other people you looked at, what were some of the, the, the solutions and, mm -hmm. and, and, and why Nutanix? So it actually took us a while to make that decision. Um, we made a collaborative decision with our engineers, uh, my CIO and some of our business units. Uh, we compared different technologies that were out in the landscape of both storage and hyperconverged. Um, what was the right path for us? We did a very uh, thorough cost analysis of five year, 10 year, what that roadmap looks like for us. And, um, 
like you said, mistakes, we can't make mistakes. And with growing security risk and healthcare industry uh, and more people wanting that data, it's really important for us to protect it and have it secure. Uh, so Nutanix really offered us a lot of the, the key components that we were looking for in our grading system when we you know, uh, were looking for a storage solution. How's the event here? What's, what, you, what have you learned? Tell us uh, your experience with Nutanix next. Sure, so coming to this event, um, I really thought uh, that we would be looking into new technologies, what other integration, like typical IT conferences, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, I think sitting in the initial keynote, I heard a lot of great positive things that are aligned with the industry, uh, the buzzwords right now in technology, as well as our own uh, roadmap for technology. Going to the cloud, uh, convergence, um, using multiple, uh, technologies for integration. So it really kind of paved what this conference was going to be. Um, in addition, I think the, the sessions, um, having the tiered approach of you can follow a pathway throughout the conference was a brilliant idea in planning. Um, so I think there's much to learn about how this conference was put on, so. I want to ask you about your role as the as the director of IT operations. Yes. I mean, so we're so you're hearing so much that it, that it, these roles are really being dramatically transformed. That it's not just about keeping the lights on. It really is you're taking a much more strategic role in the business. Yes. How would you say you approach your job differently? How would you say it has changed your leadership style? And and how much how much time do you spend thinking about being more visionary, more forward thinking versus this is what we're doing each day? Yeah, so I think historically traditional technology departments and, and management within technology have really focused on technology only. Um, over the last several years, I've made it a point to learn our business units so that um, we can apply good technology to a good process. Um, I'm a true believer and an advocate for our technology department and our staff to really know the business so that we're not putting technology on a bad process and because that doesn't really help anyone to be successful. Um, so I would say the, the shift and transition is being uh, merged and converged as an IT and business entity. Um, as far as approach, uh, getting the business to come uphill with us has been really important. Um, not only for uh, technology for the, the underlying infrastructure, but systems today. Uh, systems, there's so much uh, ability to customize it to your heart's content, um, which also leads to different issues. So using uh, technology with business process to gain efficiencies is really the, the road that is ahead of us. Yeah, one of the things that the senior execs at Nutanix talk about is their value proposition is about you know, helping consolidate a little bit here is one of the side benefits, mm -hmm. but there's a new role and kind of looking for the new kind of persona, a person with Nutanix solution is a new kind of operator. Yes. What, what, is, what do you think he means by that? So I really think it means, and I had this challenge internally actually, um, is you know, we, we have a lot of technical engineers that have grown up with the mentality that I have to know everything about this one siloed topic, right? I need to be the expert in this. Um, and really where we're going is you don't have to worry about that. I need you to know about the business. I need you to know um, about how you can make change and efficiencies to help us be successful. And that is a transition for a lot of technologists and we will get there. I, I truly believe that um, because we have to. It's a cultural yeah. thing too. It it's is like definitely a, you know, a cultural teaching thing. Teaching old dog new tricks kind of thing. Yes, absolutely. So how do you hire? I mean, let's, uh, what's, what are the, what are, to you, an applicant comes into your office, what, what do you want to see? So technology has historically been the focus of uh, what do you know, how well can you do it, to what experience, do you have enterprise grade uh, level experience? And now that's really shifting to, are you able to participate on a project? Can you build requirements? Do you understand what your customer is asking for? Um, as well as asking the questions of, is this the right thing to do? Um, not just doing what our customer asks us to do. Does it make sense? If we're going to archive data, do we need to secure it? Um, when we're transferring that in and out of the organization, uh, does that make sense? And so they, we're looking for people that are going to be outspoken a little bit and ask those hard questions. You know, we have always talked about ransomware because healthcare's been targeted. Yes. Um, 
you got you mentioned security earlier, thinking broadly. Um, you got data. Yes. You got the crown jewels, bread and butter, as you said, yes. is the data. <laughs> Are you, have you experienced ransomware? Are you guys ready for it? What's the strategy? So we've actually take a layered approach to security. Obviously in healthcare, um, there is no single pane of glass for security. Um, we've really stepped into the world of having our data encrypted at rest in transit, um, multi-layers. We do audits every year uh, to make sure that we're compliant. We pay people to try to hack us um, you know, legally because we want to know where our, our vulnerabilities Risks are. are. Um, so, we do that purposefully with intent uh, to make sure that we have the technologies in place that are going to provide us what we need for our data. Fascinating. Victoria, thank you so much for thank coming you. on theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. You are watching theCUBE.